Come with us on a journey, a journey to a place where information is unlocked, knowledge is gained, and the exchange of experiences welcome. This is the Knowledge Exchange, presented by Lakeland Community College. Okay. Yeah. I'm Marilyn Burns. I am a co-president, and my other co-president is right here, maybe Mary. And uh, we are very excited to show you how wonderful this organization is. Who here likes to travel? Who, who likes to meet people from other cultures? Hopefully all of you then will enjoy seeing what we do in Friendship Force. We're gonna start with a very easy to, to understand video from Friendship Force International that they made for their website. And that way you will get the basics and then we will go on to show uh, different exchanges or journeys that we have had. Uh, each of us have gone on different ones and we have pictures um, that we will show you and talk a little bit about what we went to. So we will start with this. If you have questions, you might want to jot them down. We will try to answer them near the end. You able to do it? Yep. This presentation is an introduction to Frenchy Force International. What is Frenchy Force? It's a worldwide organization of around 16,000 ordinary people who formed into hundreds of individual clubs in over 60 countries spread across six continents. And together, this is Friendship Force International. As a truly international organization, it's not religious. It's not political and it's not for profit. Its aim is to overcome the barriers that separate the nations of the world. In 1992, Friendship Force was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for its work building understanding between the people of the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Every year we operate around 300 travel events called Journeys. These are focused on creating mutual understanding, cultural education and learning, citizen diplomacy through homestays and personal friendships. <clears throat> These journey programs bring diverse people together into each other's cultures and homes to share one-of-a-kind experiences not available to regular tourists, personal encounters where strangers can become friends. We know that by experiencing different views, we can discover common ground. Friendship Force began in the US in the 1970s. Its founder was Wayne Smith, who lived in the city of Atlanta in Georgia. One day, he had an idea to bring together the nations of the world in friendship by means of international travel. The novel element was the idea of homestays, where visitors would stay in the homes of local people, rather than big hotels, which can often isolate travelers from the locals. The first official journey was in 1977 between Atlanta and Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK. This was an unusual event in several ways. A large number of people, almost 800, took part and two groups exchanged at the same time between the two cities. In the group from the US was President Jimmy Carter and First Lady Rosalind Carter, who would become Honorary Chair of Friendship Force for many years. The event was a great success, and clubs sprang up all around the world. An amazing achievement from one man's simple idea. How does it work? Every year, the clubs around the world send information to the headquarters in Atlanta in order to plan future journeys, normally a couple of years ahead. The information includes their availability, hosting capacity, membership, preferences for time of year, etc., and any ideas for journey types. 
This information is then used to create matches between the pairs of clubs. The matching process will take into account the club's travel history, hosting capacity and availability, plus practicalities such as regional climate and national holidays. The matching information is published on the international website and details are sent to the individual clubs for their approval and acceptance. Let's focus on one particular journey proposal, where a Japanese club will travel to Russia. The first step is for both clubs to agree to the match. Then, each club will appoint a journey coordinator, so the two clubs can liaise with each other and decide the exact journey dates, travel advice, hosting capacity, matching ambassadors to host, any special requests for things to see and do, and the cost of the journey programme. Note that the journey programme fees do not include homestay accommodation. Homestay accommodation is based on clubs giving and receiving, as they undertake their various journeys around the world, either travelling as ambassadors or offering hosting to visiting clubs. Sometimes, two smaller clubs will share a journey and be hosted together by a larger club. Some events, such as Global Journeys and Discover programmes, are designed for an international group of ambassadors. They will often have a specific theme, such as activities, crafts, learning a language, or a particular event or festival. As a member of Friendship Force, you can apply for any journey that is advertising available places. These are published on the website email to subscribers as a monthly journey catalogue. A journey begins when one club travels to stay with another. A homestay will typically last one week. There's usually a second homestay in another part of the country, or at a club in a neighbouring country. There may even be a third homestay, or more, or perhaps combination of shorter events. There are many different styles of journey available, but most have several items in common. A welcome party, at the start of the journey where members of both clubs get together and meet for the first time. Cultural visits. This is where we learn about a country and its people, its history, its industry, all about its traditions and culture. Of course, there's time to see the sites that make a place famous. Time with hosts is important for friendships to develop, pursuing hobbies, visiting workplaces, going shopping, or seeing your host's favorite local places. At the end of the week, everyone gets together for a final party to celebrate and say farewell. It's time for entertainment, maybe put on a show, enjoy great food, and maybe learn a new song. How does this compare with ordinary tourism? As an ambassador, you'll have friends to guide you with their local knowledge. They'll advise you where to go and how to get there, what to see and do, all about local customs <coughs> and useful phrases, where to find the best souvenirs, and how to order unfamiliar food in restaurants, and how much things are supposed to cost. There are many ways to take part. Travelling and hosting are the most important elements, but not everyone has time to travel or a spare room to host. Showing visitors around for the day or inviting them for dinner are also important ways to contribute. Every journey needs someone to communicate with sister clubs in other countries. Or you could be part of a committee that plans an exciting programme of events to entertain both visitors and hosts. 
Social events keep your club active when it's not involved in international journeys. Or you can just join in the fun of day trips, parties, etc. and get to meet ambassadors from visiting clubs around the world. Friendship Force provides a unique way to discover the world and its people. You can make friends both at home and abroad. When you travel, you travel with friends and like-minded people. You don't even need to travel. We can bring the world to you. It's easy to join, and there are lots of ways to participate. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you'd like to know more, why not visit our website at friendshipforce.com. Dot org. The details of all the clubs around the world, their journeys, and lots more. Well, it's goodbye from me, but remember, Frenchy Force International can bring the world to you. This is our website. The video you just saw is this 10-minute basics video, but there's a lot of other information, information about our club, one of the 300, the journeys we've taken, and uh, we are going to focus, uh, there's more detail on some of these that are shown in blue. We're going to focus on an outbound that was made to Japan in 2014 and then reciprocals that the people we met in Japan visited us, one club in 2015, one in 2016. The uh, slides you were seeing as we came in, we're not going to narrate, but that was our uh, trips to um, Mexico in 2016. Well, the trip to Japan in 2014 was uh, two and a half weeks. We went first to Kyoto because we wanted to get our jet lag adjusted and do some local sightseeing around Kyoto before we had our first homestay week, which was in Yamagata. So these are photos from um, Japan's fabulous train system, on time, clean, fast, uh, amazing. Um, and this is just some sightseeing photos. This was at uh, a Buddhist temple in Yamagata. This is the largest wooden Buddha in the world. The beautiful golden pagoda in Yamagata, excuse me, in Kyoto. This is some of the um, women who were uh, part of the 15, group of 15. This was at uh, Nijo Castle in Kyoto. Asian food, Japanese food is so beautifully prepared, presented, and delicious. And uh, I love experiencing food in other countries, so I often take photos of it to share. Uh, this is also in Kyoto at a site, and younger Japanese people, I've been told, are not so much into the traditional kimono dress and so on. But when they go to their own historical sites, they want to uh, be part of a fuller experience. So they will rent their traditional dress, dress themselves, and be part of this uh, visit for the day to a historical site, as this young couple did. After Kyoto, we went by train to Yamagata. And this is a typical first meeting, lots of smiles. Uh, they're eager to meet us, and we are meeting for the first time. Yes, you start out as strangers, but quickly um, the friendships develop very rapidly. And you can see smiling faces. Um, people have asked me, are you afraid ever to go to a stranger's home? You've just met them, and now you're going to go home with them. And my answer is always no. Um, we've never had bad experiences. And it's just a, a treasure to uh, meet new people and become a member of their family. This was my hostess in 2014. Her name is Eileen Aikuko 
Watanabe. Uh, we had a lovely time together and in 2015 she came to visit me. I took her to Washington DC. She came again in 2017. We went to Niagara Falls and she's coming again in August and we're going to visit my cousin in Maine. So friendships really do develop and she's a, a lovely person. The festival in Yamagata, our welcome dinner, was a local cultural festival called the Amoni Festival. And uh, all the groups bring their own food and develop this beautiful potato vegetable stew. In Mexico, one of our members is a retired French teacher from Cleveland Heights High School. She also speaks Spanish very well. And when she went to Mexico, she wanted to be put in with a host and hostess who spoke only Spanish, very little English, because she wanted to practice her Spanish. But they were learning English, and at the same time, they wanted to practice their English with her. So um, it, language has never been a barrier that I have been aware of even symbols or hand signals, we make it work. Uh, many trips to museums. Uh, we were taken in Yamagata to a dahlia garden, which was in full bloom. I, uh, colors, shapes, sizes, uh, I had never seen so many beautiful flowers. It was a beautiful experience. Eileen is a very interesting woman. She. Uh, was a, a professional dance instructor and a competitive ballroom dancer. Uh, she also um, played instruments. This is her in her home playing the shamisen and her playing the kodo, and she plays them beautifully. Uh, after our week stay in Yamagata, we went on to Western Tokyo, and uh, this is our group at the train station waiting to board our train. Beautiful, fast, clean, efficient uh, bullet trains. And now we're in Western Tokyo, and some of our activities are with our hosts as groups, and other times we do more uh, individual things. This is uh, at the Imperial Palace in Tokyo. Again, beautiful food, um, tempura and soups and uh, delicious, fresh, beautiful food. Um, this is a grand tea ceremony in uh, Tokyo. Um, the Japanese are very keen on having their traditions kept within their culture. They, especially in Tok Tokyo, it probably is becoming more Western all the time, but uh, you still can see beautiful tradition. Manhattan has nothing over Tokyo as far as size, busy, uh, teeming with people. Uh, this is at a high-rise skyscraper in Tokyo. I was a bit surprised, this is outside the Kabuki Theater, to see women both on the subway train and on the street, m most in Western clothes, but some still wearing the traditional kimono in uh, coming into town. We saw a wedding procession the bride and groom in a rickshaw. Uh, dinner hosting. The video talked about dinner hosting as a way to participate in a journey. Um, this was my host and hostess in Western Tokyo. She was very interested in voice. This was her voice teacher, this young man here. Uh, he was an aspiring opera singer, but very hard to uh, get involved in that professionally his wife, uh, the club president in Western Tokyo, and his wife and other people who were part of the journey. The dinner that was made for us was meatloaf. And it was just, it was delicious and a very beautiful evening. Lots of fun. Japanese people, I've said, are very lively. And you have to remember that these are the people who are very keen and probably invented the concept of karaoke. They love singing, they love dancing, and they had asked us to be prepared to do some type of skit for them. So our journey coordinator researched what was the very easiest line dance that we could possibly learn as a group, and we did the Cupid Shuffle. 
I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. It's very, very, very simple. So when it was our turn, we got up and we did the Cupid Shuffle for them. And within 10 minutes, all of the Japanese club members, the waiters and waitresses who were serving us, the bus boys, I'm surprised people from the kitchen didn't come out, and everyone was doing the Cupid Shuffle. And it was so much fun. And when they came to visit us in 2015 and 16, we also had done this for the folks in Yamagata. They were still asking to do the Cupid Shuffle. This was my home host and hostess in Western Tokyo, uh, Takashi and Yukiko Takagaki. She was a home education teacher, um, lovely people, and we really did sleep on tatami mats in their guest room. Very comfortable. Uh, probably the getting up and getting down was the hard part, but uh, part of the experience of going uh, to another country. We made a side trip and an overnight to Mount Fuji, which was uh, a wonderful trip. That's Mount Fuji. This is very small. We went to an artist's gallery. This artist has passed away. His name is Ichiku Kubota. Uh, he was known for, this is a kimono, and he was known for tie-dyeing art onto the kimono. And he would do it in such a way that kimono, 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 kimono would create a panorama landscape scene. And realizing that it was done from tie-dye was um, very impressive. The very last day that we were in Western Tokyo, our hostess gave us the treat, my travel mate, Liz Mapes and I, of dressing us in her beautiful kimonos. Now, her she has two daughters, adult daughters. They don't even own kimonos, and they don't intend to ever get any. Um, you, have to be, you have to be helped into these dresses because of the way the oboe sashes are tied and so on. So I suppose younger generations are getting away from it, but it was a beautiful treat to be dressed in her beautiful kimonos on our last day. OK, that was 2014. Now we're in 2015, and Yamagata folks that we visited are visiting us in Northeast Ohio. What is typical that we do is, uh, in a seven-day period, we have one day usually in the University Circle area, one day in Amish country, either in Geauga County or Holmes County. We'll do one day downtown with Lolly the Trolley or Nautica or The Good Time. Uh, folks may want to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or um, other museums, the Cleveland Museum of Art. We often go to, we visit Little Italy. It depends on what our hosts or our ambassadors and guests' interests are. We try and put it much, as much free time in as possible with the group activities so we get to know them and we can more customize certain things that they would like to see and do. After their arrival, we started out at Rocky River Reservation. This is on Lolly the Trolley downtown. Japanese love baseball and this is my opportunity to take Takashi to a Cleveland Indians baseball game. Uh, this now is Western Tokyo coming in 2016, meeting them at the airport. This is typical that hosts will come either to a train station or the airport to uh, meet them face to face. At our welcome dinner, which was held the evening of their arrival, they made the point to learn our national anthem and sing it to us. It's very sweet. This is in my backyard, uh, a dinner hosting opportunity I had. I, I don't actually remember their names. Lovely women, jolly. They had never lain in a hammock. I served rotisserie chicken, mashed potatoes, gravy. They had never had gravy. They had never seen a hummingbird. And we also played uh, cornhole, the beanbag game. They, they had never played cornhole. So, um, they just had a grand time. I lived down by the Chagrin River in Willoughby Hills, and uh, was a beautiful night, great experience. 
Uh, Amy, uh, one of our members, taking them again to a Cleveland Indians baseball game. This is at Lakewood Park, and it is our farewell potluck. We often do uh, potluck meals. This is a dance uh, that was done after we did, again, the Cupid Shuffle. Uh, normally, they would do this dance for us with fans. They didn't have fans, so they were using paper plates. But it's a type of line dance where they um, do uh, beautiful steps and also singing. And this was our final shot with the, um, the folks from the Western Tokyo Exchange. How many of them came? Um, wheat can take uh, up to 15 housing. And depending on whether they're couples or singles, um, when we host, we're taking 15 or 16 individuals. When we go, uh, some clubs are larger than ours. They can take as many as 20. When we go to Cairo in October, there'll be, there'll be 20 of us. that come as a group, and then they split up? They scatter into our households. So they will submit an application, and we'll know um, their food preferences. Can they do steps? Can they tolerate cats? Are they allergic to dogs? Um, what are their food preferences? And based on how they explain themselves, we will slot them into our members' homes. And the, the opposite happens when we go uh, and stay with other folks. It's the organizers who do the matching based on applications of those coming with what we know we can offer as far as um, home accommodations. Yeah, no, and the home hosting, it's volunteer. You, you're not obligated as a member. Right. And at this point now, this is uh, the first slide that Marilyn and Mary can speak about, which was a journey to New Zealand, two clubs in New Zealand uh, okay. last year. Okay, well, New Zealand was awesome. And as everyone knows, it's beautiful. We're not gonna really show you slides of all those wonderful places like the hills and the sheep and the cows. They even have deer farming, which is interesting. So I'm going to show you some things with our hosts. So this was our first day when we were in Napier. And Napier is a little town called the Art Deco Center of the World. They had an earthquake in, I think, 1931. And because of the earthquake, they rebuilt, and it was the Art Deco time. So all of their stores and everything have Art Deco uh, motifs. Well, we didn't know what they were doing, but they came and they said, meet here, and they brought all these boas and hats and feathers and put us in vintage cars and drove us all through the city as if we were royalty. It was awesome. So there's Mary right there with a the cute little hat on top, and some people have boas and hats, and it was just really a fun, fun day. They drove us to a luncheon, you said left, right? Left. Left, okay. I can do this, yes, okay. Uh, these are the vintage cars. These were two of the drivers who weren't necessarily members of Friendship Force, but they had been recruited to show off their city. And they took us to a lunch, and it was great. This is uh, where this Friendship Force group meets like every two weeks. Their people meet and they all get to know each other really well. And then whoever is visiting, they take them to this cute little coffee shop. And they're big in that uh, area of going for coffee or tea and having uh, wonderful pastries all the time. So the gal in the middle is in our group and the other two are from New Zealand. This was the highlight of my trip. They took us on buses up through the uh, a farm it was a private farm and they take you through and you go up and up and up and you're up at the cliffs and you see these incredible squawking gannets and what i thought was really interesting is that my host that day she got up early and whipped up some biscuits 
for us to have while we were up there watching the birds. I thought, who does that? And that's the one thing I found about New Zealand ladies. They bake, they garden, they embroider, they patchwork, and they still go travel everywhere. They were awesome people. They were very generous. And uh, we just really had a wonderful time with them. Here's Mary and I in a rose garden the one day. They had a big picnic, and that was great. They do a lot of things with picnics. They will bring um, thermoses of wa hot water to have tea. So they have their little basket, and they're ready to go. So we had a lot of picnics and things like that. After the gannets, they took us down to a farm where they actually showed us the sheep shearing, and uh, that was fun. And we also got to go to a little shop that sold things much cheaper. Now, one of the things that was interesting in New Zealand is possums are really nasty to their environment. So they try to kill them. And they also take those possums for fur and they mix it with other kinds of things. And so there's this possum fur thing. I do not want a possum fur thing. Well, the possums are softer. They're not like our possums. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. modern possums, yeah. <laughs> and this is one of, yeah, one of our members who got to hold uh, the little sheep lamb, I guess you'd call it. Now, here's a, there's a two of our, our gentlemen here, Mark, is helping them make breakfast. He's in their homes, and that's one of the things you do is you often take things that from our, from our area, and he had taken them maple syrup, so I think they were making French toast together. So you do a lot of things with your host, which is really cool. They took us where normal people that was traveling wouldn't get to go. One of the people who lived there, their grandkids went to this school and this school had a group that studied the Maori uh, people and did their customs. So they did a whole presentation for us and then had questions for us. One of the cute questions was a little boy raised his hand and said, are you all rich? <laughs> <laughs> and that was his view of the United States. Here is Mary with uh, one of the members there at Bridal Veil Falls. They take us to the area uh, good things. They take us to picnics, to the uh, oceans, to one of the guests. Everybody knows what this is, the Hobbit Town. And uh, not everyone got to go to that, but some one of the hosts said to uh, our people, would you like to go to that? So they got to go to this, and I guess it was very, very fun. This is one of our members at the Maori place. It's a living Maori village. So during the day, they take people out um, and show them all around how they live in this area that has all the bubbling steam and all it's it's like bubbling mud. And they live that way. They cook over the steam and they bathe in that uh, the hot water. So it's really uh, a very interesting thing. And then it closes down like at five o'clock, and nobody can come in and they, they're living their lives there, so that they actually live there. Now this is, we got a big kick out of, I don't know if any of you have studied the Maoris, but they have this tradition of sticking their tongue out and bulging their eyes. And it has to do with scaring off people they don't want around, not us, but, um, so in a lot of the sculptures, you'll see this too. All right, now let's see if I can do this right. Aha, this was just one of the Coming out, I couldn't take we couldn't take pictures inside, but the glowworms, I don't know if any of you have heard that, but they have these incredible glowworms that you're in the black going through the on the boat, and all you look up and you see all thousands and thousands of little lights. It was just really awesome, but that's a favorite tourist thing. There's a group of them that went on a hike, and this is one of the areas. Uh, Milford Sound, which is absolutely beautiful, where you take a boat out. Is that our last one? I don't remember. Anyway, it was a wonderful experience, and the people there are wonderful. They speak differently than we do, though, even though they speak English. You talk about language differences. They have different words for things. Like, well, what do you want for breaky? That was breakfast. 
And that's always fun when you go to another. And if you're with somebody, at least you can kind of learn what that is. Whereas if you're a traveler with just a, in a hotel, you're not going to maybe catch all that. My one little story was that I'd see everywhere the signs for pies. Okay, pies. And this one bus driver said, stop at there. They have the greatest pies. So I'm running over there thinking, I'm going to get a, a fruit pie. Well, it was all meat pies. <laughs> and I wasn't prepared for that. So that was great. Great trip. Um, when you talk about the language, I all my other trips were, except Canada, were with people that did not speak English at all. And I found the same way as Jackie says, you smile, there's a translator thing on your uh, phone. And a lot of times, and that can kind of not always work, but the people just laugh and, you know, trying to figure things out. And they're just, they're just wonderful because they're the type of people that want you to have a good time. The trips I went with before were, were not with the Northeast Ohio group. I didn't really, wasn't really a member. I went as just a person who signed up. Like she said, you could sign up for another global trip. And this woman I met was so great at planning it that I went with two more trips with her. So I went to Peru, I went to Costa Rica with her, and, uh, and she's just a member of Friendship Force. She's not, you know. When we go to Cairo in October, we will be with Cairo for a week and we will have homestay. And depending on the cost of admissions of museums, and we're hoping the new Grand Egyptian Museum on the Giza Plateau will finally be open, but we don't know. But the cost of things, they tell us what the per person cost will be to have admission to certain activities, a farewell party, a home party, uh, an ending party. And then after our homestay with Cairo, we're going to have an eight day add-on arranged through a travel agent, including a cruise on the Nile. And we will end up in Jordan and we will see Petra, which is the final scene of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade coming down that uh, channel in uh, beautiful Petra and we'll fly home from Amman. But other folks can go on to Abu Dhabi, they can go on to Israel, you know, whatever they want to do, self-arranged. I think what is typical when we host, they are charged, I believe, uh, no more than $175 per person for a week. And that would include uh, a farewell dinner, a welcome dinner, admissions to different things we do in Lolly the Trolley or you know whatever else we put into that week's program. And some areas are more expensive than others, but I've never heard of any that was more than $300 a week per person for a week full of activities. Yeah, and the hosts do not get paid. It's out of the, they want to meet you and they want, and they're very generous. I mean, very generous. They, they want you, you to have the best time of any place you've mm -hmm. ever been. And for people who uh, go on cruises or uh, motor coach trips, wonderful ways to travel. But your hosts will take you places that even the best tour guides don't know about. Little out of the way places for shopping or scenic places, their favorite places, restaurants and lovely, lovely experiences. And are the hosts reimbursed for the what no? No. Anything? No. no. Does, does your group organization make any effort to get a grasp on the basic language of the place that you're going to be visiting? Some it's it. it is wise to try to do that. Mm -hmm. I tried when I was going to Brazil, they speak Portuguese, so I had all the things from the library. I put it in every day. I would be talking to myself. But when I got there, that's all I could remember is like, thank you. We got Languages all. is one thing, but the Some folks will be visiting in October in Cairo, yes. Perfect. their club visited us in 2011. And before they visited, our club made a trip to the Islamic Center of Cleveland because I wanted to understand if they were going to be guests in our homes, did, should we understand certain, mm -hmm. uh, that they would have certain expectations or food or dress or pets in the home? And you know, so we wanted to understand that. So yes, we do try and um, understand as best, best we, can we can to smooth the yeah. way if there's any. Um, any other questions? Questions really are helpful. As a, as a host, 
ahead of time who's going to be with you that you can communicate? After you're matched, I think, then they, you get the email, and you can email back and forth. Yes. So, yeah, that's yeah. nice. The video said that you can apply to other clubs' journeys if there are available spaces. I just wanted to show you that in the 42 years that this organization has uh, been in existence and grown, this, as of 2018, are the clubs in the variety of countries. And uh, this is available on our website. Again, this is our website, friendshipforceneohio.org. Different information as to how the parent organization works, including the 10-minute video that you saw. This is information about our specific club, so anyone who's going to be visiting us can come here and get some general information about uh, our club and who we are. The journeys we, we've taken and our upcoming ones, uh, later in September, we're going to be doing a themed journey of health and wellness. So uh, I believe there are nine at the moment that are coming from different areas of the United States. They are probably current or retired healthcare professionals. And we're going to take them places. They'll be one week in Northeast Ohio, one week in Dayton, Ohio. We're gonna be taking them to the Cleveland Clinic for the day. Um, different activities. I know we are going to the Middlefield Care Center, Amish Birthing Center, uh, because the Amish do have different ways of taking care of their medical needs. They don't have typical insurance. The mothers don't go into a traditional hospital to have their children and so on. And also we're going to go to the DDC clinic uh, associated with Amish births at times as perhaps a greater a number of genetic disorders, and uh, so there is a special clinic in Geauga County that we'll be, we will be taking our guests to to understand um, the services provided at the DDC clinic. Then in the fall is going to be our trip to Cairo. We have already been given our matches for 2020. The folks we will be hosting will be coming from Wellington, New Zealand. And even though we've just been to New Zealand, these are other clubs the in New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand has a lot of clubs. I don't know why. So Wellington, I'm going to uh, get all that lingo, Mary, and I will have to practice so we say the right things. And our outbound will be to two homestay clubs in Turkey. We've just been given those um, announcements. Uh, ways to contact us, membership applications. This is the parent organization's website. This is the one that I just talked about where in September we're going to be hosting folks for health and wellness. And this is my trip to Cairo that is still looking for, I believe, uh, six or seven more travelers. But it's filling up nicely. Uh, if you click on any of these, You can contact with the journey coordinator that you're interested in, want more information. There's an overview, a more specific itinerary. What will be going, what we'll be seeing, some details and some costs and so on. So that's the uh, parent organization site. And, and membership is very <coughs> inexpensive to, to belong. So even if you don't plan a trip real, re real in the future, but you want to know what's going on in our group in Northeast Ohio, I think it's, it's just $25. $25, yeah, <laughs> just to be a part of the group. This is another example of some folks who visited us from the Tripoint area of Central North Carolina. Our welcome dinner was at Trattoria in Little Italy, but these are folk, uh, photos from our Amish day. One of our members is very well connected with the Amish community in Geauga County because she is in business uh, in the production of maple syrup. Her name is uh, Aggie Sochka. And she arranged for us to have a luncheon in an Amish home at their table. It was like Thanksgiving. It was the, one of the heaviest lunches I'd ever had. But the woman of the house and her daughter-in-law uh, prepared our meal on a wood stove, no electricity, 
and we had uh, homemade bread, uh, apple butter, salad, fried chicken, whipped potatoes, corn, green beans. Dessert was peanut butter pie, cherry pie, uh, lemonade, and iced tea. And after that, uh, we went to a neighbor, and uh, the young man gave us buggy rides on their little sulky buggy. Uh, we also were taken, there are many home-based businesses amongst the Amish, and uh, this was a buggy assembly business. So the Amish families will uh, decide the size and type, and uh, an average brand new Amish buggy is about $5,000, at least in Northeast Ohio. Um, so we do a lot in the Geauga County area, but this was at Lehman's. I don't know if anyone's ever been to Lehman's store down in Holmes County. I think maybe some people have to go back to work, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> it's been our pleasure to talk with you today about Friendship Force, and we invite you to take some complimentary luggage tags that we've prepared and a brochure of our organization and visit our website. We'd be happy to see you. Thank you.